Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today we have uh, lecture series number five of the Department of Criminology. Today's uh, speaker is uh, Jonathan Prentis. Uh, he is uh, which one is the uh, proper uh, British or English? Uh, both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> if I was Scottish, then I would uh, have a problem, but I'm not. Uh, I will read his short uh, CV. Uh, he has worked for the United Nations since 1994 in variety of capacities, including political affairs, peacekeeping, and now human rights. He has served the organization in New York, Geneva, Cambodia, East Timor, Iraq, and now he is posting in Indonesia. He got his undergraduate degree of law from Cambridge University and Master of Law from University of Oxford. Here yeah, I will let uh, Jonathan Prentice to address his uh, speech for maybe about uh, 40 minutes. Maybe a little less. Okay, now the time is used. Okay. I'm not just saying it, it's actually very nice to come to an academic environment. In the UN, we have to measure and weigh every single word that we speak and write, and it's, it's very nice to be liberated from yeah. that uh, uh, in the university. Um, just a couple of, of caveats. One is, I really am not an expert in the subject matter that we're talking about, the mix between humanitarian law and human rights law. I realized I wasn't an expert once I started reading into the subject. Um, uh, and it's quite a complicated one. Um, this will be a heavily legal talk that I'll give, but I think that's inherent in the nature of the, the subject matter. Um, so I've drawn heavily on a number of um, uh, academics and practitioners who I think are experts, uh, as I say, both in, in, in the field of academia, but also those who work for the, the uh, International Commission of the Red Cross who have to deal with these issues on a daily basis as well as uh, other colleagues in the United Nations. And I will gladly make available to you at the end of uh, our session a bibliography of, of resources that I think might be of interest to those of you who wish to uh, read into this in a, in a little more uh, detail. Um, but anyway, the, the question before us is, is whether it is a myth or a reality to talk about linkages between international humanitarian law and international human rights law. Uh, and at, at a first glance, it might be a little strange to even think of asking this question. And I will, I'll quote here from the, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, which stated that the general principle of respect for human dignity is the basic underpinning and indeed the very raison d'etre of international humanitarian law and human rights law. So we see, I think self-evidently and intuitively, um, that the two bodies of law uh, already have in their origins um, strong linkages. And both bodies of law, of course, also include many of the same protections of the right to life, um, the protection against being tortured or badly treated, uh, the protection of family rights, uh, and so on. Um, but, but obviously it would make for a quick talk if we left matters there and said the two bodies of law are the same and let's all go off and, and have a cup of coffee. Um, uh, and indeed, anything that has to do with lawyers is in, invariably more complicated um, uh, than that. Um, whilst it's a little crude to reduce definitions to, to one sentence. So I'm going to try to do so here for the sake of getting this discussion going. Uh, and in essence, humanitarian law deals with the inherent rights of the individual to be protected. Um, uh, no, no, sorry. Human rights law deals with the inherent rights of the individual to be protected at all times against abusive state power. Humanitarian law, on the other hand, regulates 
the conduct of parties, both state and non-state, to an armed conflict. That's hence its old-fashioned uh, title, the laws of war. Um, and let's look at some of the differences that this entails. Traditionally, the two bodies of law, as I've just said, bind different actors. Humanitarian law applies to parties to the conflict, both state and non-state. Human rights law has been seen, though this is changing, to apply only to state actors. Humanitarian law seeks to chart a fair and a balanced approach to a conflict between two combatant parties. Human rights law seeks to regulate the essentially imbalanced power relations between a state and the individuals within that state. Another difference, which we'll touch on in a little while as well, is that human rights law allows for derogations in certain situations. You can suspend the law effectively. Humanitarian law obviously does not, because it by definition only applies in exceptional circumstances. Thirdly, there are procedural differences between the two bodies of law, uh, particularly as regards individual standing and the right to a remedy. Uh, humanitarian law does not recognize individual standing at the international level, but all major international human rights treaties have some form uh, of individual complaints mechanism uh, built into them. So they entertain such rights as to a remedy, to reparation, uh, and importantly, to an investigation. So I think what we can say is that human rights law has a more sophisticated um, and larger machinery for the monitoring uh, and enforcement of its norms than does international humanitarian law. As a general rule, one should look to humanitarian law as that body that is that body of law which is most refined when it comes to addressing the conduct of hostilities, because its norms are based on the assumption that military operations are ongoing.